Let's have a brief look at uh, the files we have downloaded. So the project is downloaded uh, to my desktop and I'll go straight to our PHP folder. All I'm interested in at this time is um, this um, three, two files and the folder classes. And what I did, I imported these files or it's, you can simply copy and paste or import them into a development environment of your choice. For this uh, project, I was using um, NetBeans development environment and I have a project here which has uh, source files and inside of those files, source files, I have a new folder called APNs. So all the files in this folder, so this folder contains uh, files that are needed for uh, for me to send push messages. Uh, this folder does not contain any other files. So if I go and compare, uh, I have, let me open, let me hide this uh, folders. I have um, APN's PHP file, I have sample's PHP file, and I have folder called classes, which will contain classes. Later on, when I'm done developing um, my when I'm done customizing these PHP files, I will upload it to my production server, uh, which I have with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm running uh, an, uh, an EC2 small instance. And uh, right now you see my um, FTP client, which is called FileZilla. And on the left side is the project I have opened here. It's called Swift App and and MySQL. So this is the folder. I can go inside of APNs files. These are the files uh, I'm seeing here. And on the right side is my remote site, which is um, my Linux uh, server running on Amazon. And I'm also inside of APNs file, which contains classes, folder, APNs and other files that we will create during this uh, course. I have already created needed certificates and a couple of sample uh, PHP files to send push messages. And if I access this um, server through the browser URL, like I have the main name, which links to Amazon, and then a uh, folder that I've created uh, inside of my um, public um, www and Inside there, I have APNs. So if I go all the way up, so I have Fora app here. So this is the Fora app. And then I go in, I have APNs, and this is the APNs. And inside of APNs, I have my uh, files that I needed for push messages. And if I access the very first file, it says no APN tax, tasks provided. Uh, this is because this APNs file, the very first file, let's open it in uh, PHP, uh, it accepts uh, some of the tasks as uh, HTTP uh, request parameters. And one of the tasks, for example, is to create uh, a new entry for the device or another task will be to um, fetch push messages. Uh, we will come back to it a bit later. So what does this file do? Well, first of all, it imports uh, needed classes for it to work. So you can either use this approach that imports files or requires them, or you can comment this out and import files by using uh, include or include once or require once. Um, just make sure you include the files that are inside of this classes folder. These two files, class APNs, and class DB connect. They need to be included. Uh, and then we create database object um, by passing some of the parameters uh, to it, like the server we're connecting. I'm using local hosts um, and then username, the password, and the database name. So inside of my development environment, if I hold command button and click on DB connect, it will take me to DB connect class which is inside of a folder called classes. And here's the constructor for this class. So it accepts um, the first argument is host and the username and then password and then database. Um, 
So these are the credentials for uh, that you use to access your database. In my case, um, these are the ones I've created. In your case, you will need to use uh, your credentials that you use to access database. And then uh, don't change anything below. Basically, uh, this is the source code that uh, friends from uh, from from Manifest Interactive have created. I'm not the owner of this project. It's an open source project created by Manifest Interactive. So um, all rights uh, belong to them, but the license allows me to uh, use and reuse and um, to have uh, this project for, for my needs as long as I keep their licensing uh, inside of my source files. Uh, okay, so um, basically APNs, uh, we are done with APNs. We will be passing some tasks to it, uh, like uh, fetch uh, all messages or create, for example, new entry for the device. Uh, the next file we will have a look is uh, called um, samples. And inside of the samples files, uh, the structure is very similar. We were loading classes that we need, and then we're creating database uh, connection and uh, and then there are some examples for us to create push messages. Uh, for example, uh, we will create an APNs object and then we can instantiate a new message for device one. If I, if I hold command button and click on new message, it will take me to implementation of this uh, function. We will not be editing it at this time. I'm only going through um, this um, source files briefly for now to show you what they are and what they are used for. So here we are creating a new message for a device with ID one, for example, and then we are adding a message a body to it. This is the alert message that will be sent to a user. This is the message, the content or the text that user will see when they receive a message. And we can also add some custom parameters to our um, message that mobile application can receive and act upon accordingly. Uh, those uh, custom parameters allow us to send some additional information that user will not see, but our mobile application can make use of it. And um, there are more we can do. For example, in example two, we can add, we can add a future date uh, for a message to be delivered and we can add message badge number um, that user will see on the icon. And uh, if we scroll down, we can even add a custom sound um, to our message. Uh, and uh, there, there, are more, there are more we can do to it, like for example, sending a messages to more than one user by providing these IDs uh, as an array. Um, Okay, so this is an example file uh, for us to reference. We will not use it as is, but we will um, try uh, those examples one by one and see how these messages are sent and received in our mobile application. The next file uh, we will look is called is inside of classes folder and it's called classapns.php. I'll scroll all the way to the top of this class. Again, we have license here and some of the very important uh, details here, like the development. Here, um, as long as you are testing with your, um, uh, with, for example, ad hoc applications, um, as, as long as you install them, uh, through your cable or ad hoc, you need to use Sandbox because it's going to be a Sandbox version of your mobile app, which is not yet in production, which is not yet on the App Store. As soon as mobile application is moved to the App Store, you will need to change this Sandbox value to production. And then uh, it will work. Otherwise, if your mobile app is already on the App Store, but you're still using sandbox environment, this will not work. Uh, and then we scroll down. Um, here is the path to the uh, log file, uh, which will log some of the details like APN errors. 
Uh, so you can leave it as is or you can provide a different path uh, we go below this one is very important the the path the a complete path or the absolute path to your production certificate production certificates are created in your apple developers um, portal i will show you how to create this uh, certificates how to import them and how to make them work so um, inside of class apns certificate uh, you will need to read comments so here we have a path for production certificate and then a passphrase for your production certificate this this passphrase we will create later on i'll show you how to do it um the next um uh, ssl variable we do not change the value of it it's the actual um a gateway to a production um, um, push server uh, with apple so we do not change its port number or we do not change its url this value should not be changed and we go back to the feedback we should also not change this value it should stay as is and then absolute path to your development certificate so this certificate is for development purposes uh, before we move move our uh, app to um, app store I will show you how to create this certificate so here we will need to provide an absolute path and what do i mean by that so it, my absolute path to production certificate is uh um, it starts with var ww html so if i go to my uh, ftp client i used to upload php files to my server so if i uh, read here remote side and it says var ww so this is the path to my apache web server public folder called html so all the files inside of this folder are publicly accessible to um to users if they know their path so i put my my certificate files into that folder but later on i have changed the permissions to those files so uh and if i look up so these are this is my development and this is my production uh, files you can put them into a different folder as long as you provide a correct path to this certificate file and then pass a uh, passphrase uh, or password uh, to your uh, sandbox certificate and then again these values should not be changed don't change them they should stay as is and I think the rest uh, of the class is the um, is the business logic, the constructor, and the functions that make this uh, push notification server work. You can look at it and and see how uh, how it's built, so that you can add or enhance this uh, notification server with new functionalities. The next uh, and the last class is DB Connect. Basically, this um, class uh, we will not uh, really modify it's uh, it will stay as is there are no custom parameters we need to change it works very well so we will leave it as as is um, okay uh, so uh, this is it for our brief introduction to PHP files that we will be uh, working with and uh, let's continue